Hello, it's Aga from Arvis Artist. As promised, today is the second video from the render element topic. If you haven't watched the first part yet, be sure to check it out, as I won't explain things we discussed before. The link, as always, will be in the corner. you tested different render elements last week and now you are ready to learn how to use them in post-production. So without any further ado, let's begin. After rendering, we have two options of saving the render elements. We can simply choose the path we want and click to save it. I will save it and save as EXR. Or we can hold the save button and choose save all from the list. Let's make it simple. Zero 01. As you can see, all elements are saved here. I delete alpha as I don't need it duplicated. So you can see that all passes are automatically named. So it's easy to work with them now. Also, we don't really need this pass as it's the beauty. So the render without any post, bloom and glare effects, light mix adjustments. Okay, so I have all them in Photoshop. I would recommend putting them all into one group to make it cleaner. I will turn off all of them and I will turn them one by one if I need to. Let's start from the mask. Let's say the client wanted some quick changes after the render was finished. We don't have time to change it in max, so we can make small adjustments in post. Let's say we'll modify the armchair. By using the magic wand, select the armchair. We can choose, for instance, the brightness and contrast. You can see that we can quickly make the adjustments. We can also change the hue slightly. You don't have to use the mask again. You can click with Alt in between the layers and now this effect only works on the layer below. mask with the wire color as well. So you can select any of these objects by using the magic wand. Ok, now alpha. As I've told you in the previous video, there is no really need to add an alpha channel element. The final render has this information included here, but you need to select the proper option at the beginning. Let me show you. So now, let me show you how to use it. In the Channels tab, click on the Alpha with Control. You can see that we have the selection. Now go back to the layers and click Mask. You don't have a background, so we could make a sky replacement. I won't show this in this video, as in the future, I do the sky replacement video and I show you how to do it step by step. But you know the idea. Ok, so I delete this mask as I don't really want to replace it. Ok, now reflect pass. We can take it out of the group. Now we need to use the blend mode. Screen in this case. Here we go, so it adds an additional layer of reflection on top of the image. We don't want to use it everywhere, but sometimes some glimpse of the reflection can be enhanced. Click the mask. Make it black and now we can mask out parts we want with the white brush. I don't like to use 100% of the opacity, so I always change it here. I think it will be nice to add some reflections on the lamp, for instance. Maybe a bit here, and here as well. Click with Shift on the mask to turn off the mask for a moment and turn it back. So for instance, we can add a bit on the armchair to add more details. We can also make a use from the mask select. 
For instance, let's select the table metal and now add it to the reflection layer with Alt plus Backscapes. Similarly, we can use Refract Pass. We can mask it a bit in some places. You can do similar things with the light select element. So for instance, we can take the sun and enhance its effect on the floor. You can do similar things with other passes. I'm not going to show them all. You can test it by yourself on your images. Anyway, at the end I will show you how to work with Z-Depth. First, we need to merge all layers, so do this effect at the end. Choose the top layer and use the shortcut Ctrl plus Alt plus Shift plus E. Now choose Z-Depth, then click with Alt on the channel. We have the selection. We can turn it off. Go to the Merge layer and add the mask. Click on the image and go to the filter, Blur and Lens Blur. Choose the source as Layer Mask. Here we can control the effect. By changing Blur Focal Distance, we can adjust where the focal point is. Let's say I want it on the cut. By the way, let me know in the comments what do you think about this video. Or maybe more at the front. We can adjust it. It's not the perfect way of doing it as you will get better results in 3D. Besides, we'll need to adjust some extra things. But as I said, sometimes we don't have a choice and it's better to know different options. After you adjust it to your needs, click OK. Delete the mask from this layer and here we go. Ok, now I show you which render elements I use in V-Ray or the ones that I think can help more often than others. The workflow is the same. You need to go to the Render Element tab and choose the elements you need. Ok, I will choose the Multimat element. V-Ray Alpha. V-Ray Denoiser is really important to add, to be able to denoise images at the end. Lighting contains all direct diffuse illumination, while global illumination stores indirect lighting information coming from reflective diffuse light in a scene. Very light mix, but remember in Vray 5 to make use of the new feature. And of course, light select. Eventually, maybe you can also use material ID if you want to have all materials on one layer. Very refraction and reflection, pretty straightforward. Very specular can be handy as well. Here there will be all the specular reflections, so the highlights. Very self illumination stores the illumination of any self illuminated materials in the scene, so if you add the light material on something, it will be there. For sure, I will also add very wire color. And very Z depth. Anyway, you can see that the naming is pretty similar, and the workflow in Photoshop also works in a similar way. At the end, I show you the multimat element. You can see that you have three colors for masking again, and you can choose which objects to include on each of them. Or you can use the object ID as I'm showing you in the previous video, so in this case, all objects with object ID 1 will be red, 2 green, and 3 blue, and so on. And in the Z-Dev, similarly, 
we can set the distance as in the corner. Ok, I think that's it for today. If you want to learn our methods of creating visualizations, I'd love to invite you to check out our visualization course where we teach you step by step how to create 10 different visualizations. Click here to check it out on our website. Bye bye!